Welcome to Trojan Tech. Today, we will be showing you how to install a Trojan Lithium One Pack into an EasyGo RXV golf car. To complete this installation, you'll need the following tools. A cordless drill, drill bits or hole saws including 3 8 inch, 7 8 inch, and 2 inch diameters, drive bits or screwdrivers, flat, Phillips, hex, and torx, drive bit and socket extensions, 3 8 inch drive torque wrench, 3 8 inch drive sockets, including 12 and 13 millimeter, and a 9 16 inch deep socket, side cutters or flush cut pliers, needle nose pliers, zip ties, and electrical tape. A cordless impact driver can also be useful for disassembly. Included with your purchase of the Trojan Lithium Ion One Pack battery is a charger, a gauge kit which includes a wire harness, an on off button, and an LCD screen. You will also be provided with a mounting bracket that is cut to fit the custom vehicle's make and model. The RXV we are working on today has an automatic parking brake that engages when the battery is removed. If your vehicle doesn't have that feature, set the parking brake or use wheel chocks to prevent the car from moving while you work on it. Make sure to turn the key switch to the off position. Next, you'll be removing the seat. Tilt forward and lift the hinges out from the front of the body of the vehicle. Locate the tow run switch on the passenger side of the car and flip the switch from run to tow. To remove the existing batteries, start by removing the main negative followed by the main positive cable. Tuck the cables out of the way. Be sure not to lose track of the blue wire. Then, remove the remaining cables and set them aside. They won't be reused. Once the cables are removed, remove the bolts that secure the battery hold down, and then remove the hold down. Using the appropriate lifting straps, remove the old batteries from the vehicle. The batteries in this vehicle require two lifting straps to safely remove them. It's easier to pull the rear battery into the main compartment using the straps. Then reposition the straps and remove the battery. Before installing the new mounting bracket, clear out any loose dirt or debris from the battery compartment with a rag or vacuum. The mounting bracket on this Easy Go car is in two separate pieces that will mount onto existing holes in the body on either side of the battery compartment. Each piece is mounted using a bolt and flat washer fed from under the vehicle, then secured from the top with another flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. You may need a helper to feed the bolt from under the car. Now, tighten all four nuts down to secure the brackets. To run the wires for the state of charge gauge and remote on off switch, we will need to take a few pieces of the car off, starting with a side trim. To remove it, there are five screws that are easily visible. Once they are removed, the panel slides off horizontally away from the body. Use the same procedure to remove the trim piece from the other side. The floor liner is secured with push rivets that can be removed using a flat blade, screwdriver, or trim panel removal tool. There are seven total. Be sure not to miss any around the pedals. Once they are removed, you can fold the liner and remove it by maneuvering it around the pedals. To remove the dashboard, start by removing the two screws located under the top edge of the dashboard, then remove the three clips located under the cup holder. Once they're removed, pull the dashboard face forward, and finally remove the cup holder. There are two more push rivets next to the accelerator pedal to allow access to the wiring channel. Starting from the battery compartment, route the end of the gauge wiring harness with the white six pin and black two pin connector under the main body and into the wiring channel at the bottom of the car. Route the cable under the dash and behind the dashboard. 
you may find it easier to remove the hood for easier access when routing wires inside of the dash. Determine the best location to mount your gauge and remote on-off button and carefully drill holes to mount them. Use a 2-inch hole saw for the gauge and a 7 8 inch hole saw for the on-off button. Be careful not to hit any wires on the dashboard while drilling. Remove the nut from the back of the on-off button and install the button through the front of the hole. Install the gauge display from the front of the dashboard with the Trojan logo in the 12 o'clock position. Feed the nut for the on-off button over the wires and secure the button to the dash by threading it on and tightening it down. The gauge display includes a plastic collar that is pressed over the back of the gauge and will click into place with clips at the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock positions. Connect the 6-pin connector to the back of the gauge display and the 2-pin connector to the wiring pigtail on the on-off button. Be sure to set them firmly until you hear a click. Find a suitable location for the charger on the driver's side of the car with the indicator lights facing the front of the vehicle. Double check to make sure the battery is in storage mode and with a helper or a battery lift, install the Trojan 1-pack battery with the terminals facing the passenger side of the vehicle. The mounting feet will fit over the studs on the bracket you installed earlier. Install a flat washer, a lock washer, and then a nut onto each stud. Tighten down until the battery is secure. For easier access to the battery terminals, Remove the two push rivets that secure the emergency brake release cover, then remove the cover and move it out of the way. Being careful not to strain the wires that attach to the tow run switch, route the charger cables around the front of the battery compartment toward the battery terminals. And we're ready to connect the battery. Put the ring terminals directly onto the bolt, starting with the state of charge gauge, then the charger. Any accessories that were previously installed on the car like our blue wire. And finally, the main positive wire to the car. Hand thread the bolt into the positive terminal and then torque to 55 inch pounds. Once it's tight, replace the protective cover. Arrange the negative cables the same way starting with the gauge harness and ending with the main negative cable. Hand tighten the bolt into the terminal and torque to 55 inch pounds. Install the protective cover. The gauge communication cable should be connected to COM1. The connector is keyed. The notch should be at the 12 o'clock position. Secure it in place by spinning the silver collar clockwise. The canned terminator will be installed on COM2. It is keyed the same way with the notch in the 12 o'clock position. Secure it by spinning the silver collar. Double check all of your connections and then turn on the battery by pressing and holding the power button for about six seconds. The gauge on the dashboard should light up, but the car won't turn on until the emergency brake release cover is reinstalled and the tow run switch is moved to the run position. Once you've confirmed the gauge and dashboard push button are working correctly, Reassemble the dashboard floor and trim panels in reverse order of how it was disassembled. 